Hi, I'm Sam Sheridan from Sheridan Computers. Um, today I'm going to be installing FreeBSD 12.1. I'm going to be doing this on um, XCPNG. Now it makes no difference, it's a similar process to doing it on um, bare metal. So you can um, easily apply this video to that. If you'd like to hire us for any projects, please head over to our website at sheridan.co.uk, click on the Hire Us button, fill out the form, leave some details on what you're looking for, um, and we'll get back to you. You can also find some details on our website about who we are, what we do, and some of the clients that we um, deal with. If you like this video, please uh, hit the like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and if you hit the notifications icon, you'll get notifications of any vi new videos that are released. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do this. As I say, we're doing this on XCPNG. Um, if you head over to freebsd.org, you can see the current version is 12.1. Um, so you can download FreeBSD and download the current ISO, which is the exact process that I did. So we've got the ISO downloaded, so now we're going to head over to the uh, Zen Orchestra and we're going to start the install. So for this, we're going to create a new virtual machine. I'm going to select my pool for the template. There isn't one in here, so we're going to use other install media. Uh, I'm going to give it two virtual CBUs and I'm going to give it one gig of RAM. We can always change that later if necessary. Um, select the ISO to use. So I'm using FreeBSD 12.1 release AMD64. I need to add a disk. I'm going to give it 20 gig of disk space, which is plenty for the project that I'm working on. So now we can go ahead and uh, create the machine. In fact, if I tell it not to boot, and I want to bind it to a particular host for this case, um, we can go ahead and create the machine. So now we have our virtual machine created. Um, we can uh, go ahead and we can kick it up. So we're in the console and now we're going to boot off the uh, ISO. Go ahead and press enter to force the boot. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, hit install. The other options you have is you can boot off uh, live CD or you can drop to a shell. So we're going to go through install. Set your key map. United Kingdom. Continue. Um, we'll go ahead and give it a host name. So, distribution select. We need to uh, select the components that we want to install. Um, to be honest, the defaults are generally fine. Um, you can install the ports tree at this point if you install ports from source, but um, there's no need if you're using the binary install. I'm going to go ahead and select ports, uh, and I want the system source tree. As I say, you don't actually need to do that. And then we can go ahead and select this partition in. Um, so because we're on a virtual machine, I'm just going to go ahead and do auto UFS. If you was installing this on bare metal and you wanted to do it um, on ZFS, then you can do auto ZFS and install it that way if you've got multiple drives. As we only have one drive, we're going to be using UFS, it's fine. Uh, again, you can um, adjust the disk partitioning yourself. Um, the defaults are generally fine for most purposes. I'm going to go ahead and select GPT for my partition table. And now it shows us the um, layout of the disk. So we can go ahead and we can edit that. Um, it's fine for 
what I want, so I'm going to go ahead and just continue. And commit. So the discs have been initialized. Now at this stage it's just going to go through and um, extract all the components that we selected in the previous steps. So as you can see we're, uh, the install is nearly finished at this point. So now at this point it's just going to uh, run through and uh, verify the checksums of the um, files that it's brought in from the ISO. And now we're actually going to um, extract the files from the archives that have been brought across. So all the archives have uh, pretty much all extracted now. So we need to um, put in a password for root. Let's go ahead and do that. And now we need to set up the network interface. So, would you like to configure IPv4? Yes. DHCP? Yep. We're not going to configure IPv6 for this at this time. That's fine. So, now we need to set the time zone. Fine. And the date. Um, and we're going to have SSHD enabled. I want NTP date enabled. I want NTP daemon enabled. I'm going to disable that. I'm not bothered about crash dumps for this. So we have various um, hardening options. So the ones I would recommend are hide UIDs. Add group IDs. Um, so we can hide processes running in jails. Um, there's various options that we can set here. Um, disable reading kernel message buffer from privileged users. Disable processes debugging facilities for unprivileged users. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. If somebody's running a process, there's no reason and um, they shouldn't be able to debug it. Uh, random PID, um, unless there's some vulnerability I know about, I don't know about. Um, yeah, I don't see the point of random PIDs. Clear temp is always good to set, because uh, especially if you're using ports uh, and building from source, it'll put loads of crap in temp. Um, disable opening syslog, so that'll prevent um, outgoing syslog. Disable send mail service. If you do this, you're not going to be able to get notification messages unless you install some other transport agent. Uh, enable secure console. So if you boot up and you try and um, get into single user mode, it still requires a password. Is also a good idea. Um, so we'll go ahead. Would you like to add users to the installed system now? Yes. So let's go ahead and create a user. UID, leave as default, login group, I'm going to set this as wheel, so we can um, ask you to root. Um, invite to other groups, no. Login class, default is fine. SH, home directory, leave uh, default permissions. Use password based authentication, yes. Use an empty password, no. Use a random password, no. So let's go ahead and uh, stick in a password.
Lock out the account after creation. Nope. Yep, looks good to me. Add other user. Nope. So at this point, um, we're ready to reboot, so let's go ahead and do that. Installation is finished. Would you like to uh, open a command shell before? Yep, no. Let's just go ahead and reboot. Eject the media from the virtual machine and go ahead and reboot. So as you can see, I did have a. It did come up with a pager VM fault, uh, and I had to do a. Force restart of the virtual machine. Okay, so now we have FreeBSD um, booted. So, because we're running on FreeBSD, um, there's a uh, we're running on XCPNG. There's a, we do need to install the guest utilities. Need to log in real quick. Okay, so first thing I'm going to want to do is uh, update the system. Let's go ahead and do that. By issuing FreeBSD have an update space fetch. Okay, so the, file, the uh, updates have downloaded, so just Q to get out of that. Q again. Now we're going to go ahead and install the updates. Okay, so the uh, operate FreeBSD is now um, up to date. So I'm going to go ahead and um, give them a quick re. Oh, actually, um, as I mentioned, because we're running on XCPNG, we need to install the uh, guest utilities for that within FreeBSD. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Um, if you're installing FreeBSD on bare metal, you don't need to do this step. I say this is only because I'm using it as um, a virtual machine within XCPNG. So to install the guest utilities, package install. XE guest utilities. Now the package management tool is not installed, yes, install it. And I'll go ahead and um, download the package manager as well as any updates. So it's uh, installed the uh, package manager. So um, now we want to install um, the XE guest utilities. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Do you want to proceed with this action? Yes. And as you can see, if we look at the virtual machine, currently it says uh, no Zen tools detected. Okay, so the uh, installation of um, Zen guest utilities is complete. So there's a couple of um, additional steps I want to um, go through just before we wrap this video up. Um, so it's Zengast. So let's go and edit the uh, rc.com file. So we want to enable the Zengast utilities by doing Zengast. We've got enable equals yes. Um, I'm also going to enable a firewall. Out of the box, FreeBSD doesn't come with uh, any type of firewall. Uh, there's various options. Now, the one that I tend to use is in PF. It's the same one that's used in PF Sense. Um, I've always used it. You do have other options such as IP filter, IPFW, etc. So, to enable PF, we literally just do PF underscore enable equals yes. So with that complete, we need to um, specify some rules for PF uh, for uh, PF firewall. So I'm just going to do vi for etc. PF.conf pass quick all. So we have a rule: just pass quick all. Uh, I'm not going to go through configuring 
PF firewall in this video. Maybe I'll do a, another video on that if anybody is interested in doing that. Um, the last thing I want to do, if we do X, VR etc. SSHD SSHD underscore config. Did I do something wrong then? And uh, so for SSH, you can change the port here if you like to uncomment that and change the port number. Um, and you can uncomment this if you've got multiple uh, network cards um, to which IP address to bind to. And I'm going to do allow users and the user that we created. So that will basically just allow only that user to log in via SSH. At that point, we're pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick reboot um, to, because we did a operating system update and everything. So I'll do a reboot and that will enable the Zengesh utilities as well at the same time. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've fully rebooted, so we'll go ahead and log in. So as you can see we were fully up to date um, and Zengesh Utilities should now be running. So as you can see um, it now says hardware virtualization with power virtualization drivers enabled. Um, so we've got the guest utilities in, which will also allow us to um, restart the machine and everything from Zen Orchestra. Um, that's about it for this video. Thank you very much if you made it this far. I hope the video was useful. Um, if you need to install FreeBSD, uh, we use FreeBSD quite a lot, so uh, I'm going to be doing some uh, more FreeBSD videos. Um, we'll get some, um, we're doing some cool stuff with that. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, hit the like button. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and uh, if you hit the notification icon, you'll get notifications of any new videos that we do. If you would like to hire us for uh, any projects at all, head over to our website at sheridan.co.uk. If you click on the Hire Us button, um, Fill out the form, leave some details on what you're looking for, um, and we'll get back to you, as mentioned at the beginning of the video. Um, again, I hope this helps. Thank you for watching.